Four players won big last night, and the Fantasy Five top prize grows larger. Watch tonight's drawings at 11, only on Channel 2. Photography. Your local news, which is next. Coming up on Eyewitness News Nightwatch, Jones County deputies hit the jackpot in tonight's raid. We'll show you what happened when they busted a lottery store. And some may think their holiday fun is now a bust with this burst of cold weather. Bill Powell will show you what's in store weather-wise for this weekend's parades and our gifts from the heart drive. So stay with us. Eyewitness News Nightwatch is next. Low, 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 merry savings. Bring in the holidays and lose your furniture center. Still get it at holiday event. This five-piece time dining suit is just for $4.97. Jerry Vanity will stoop for only $97. Choose either this sofa or love seat for $250. Queen Anne table set, $25 each piece. Jerry Poster bedroom suit, $4.97. Plus pay nothing down, no payments till $98, and no interest till $99. Lose your furniture center, $67.3 hours now. Park Place, ho, 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 Macon, Georgia. I really love Christmas, the sights, the sounds, and especially the super Christmas sale at Belk. You'll find incredible 25 to 50% savings on great looking fashions and wonderful gifts for everyone on your holiday shopping list. Like cozy warm clothing for the whole family, the finest fleece and flannel styles for men and women, and a huge selection of denim and corduroy, all at great prices. It's the super Christmas sale going on now. Hey, at Belk, everything we do is all for you. From Atlanta, the Georgia Lottery presents Cash 4 and Fantasy 5. And good evening, I'm Glenn Burns with Lisa Jeter of KPMG Pete Marway. First, we have four Cash 4 machines, each with balls numbered 0 through 9. And your first Cash 4 lead number tonight is 6. That will be followed by 4. Up next is 6. And finally, we have 9. So your Cash 4 winning numbers again for tonight are... 6469. If you have 6469 in any winning combination, congratulations. Now on to Fantasy 5, where we have 35 balls mixing. You can win by matching three or more. Your Fantasy 5 winning numbers tonight are 2, 16, 34, 27, and 22. So again, your Fantasy 5 winning numbers for tonight are 2, 16, 34, 27, and 22. Tonight's big game winning numbers could mean an estimated $8 million for you. The tape of the drawing airs in just a few minutes right here. Coverage straight from the heart. You're watching 13 WMAZ Eyewitness News Night Watch. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Tina Hicks, and this is Eyewitness News Nightwatch for Friday, December 5th. Our top story, a Jones County woman is in jail tonight, charged with helping to run an illegal gambling operation in the back of a lottery store. Well, it wasn't the first time deputies busted the lottery outlet on Highway 49. After a two-month undercover operation, deputies raided the place for having 17 illegal slot machines in the back room. Gamblers buy a credit that gives them a chance to win money from the machines, and that's illegal. You know, since the lottery, we've seen more and more of, of these type operations in a lot of the mom and pop stores, but this one has gotten larger. It's more like a casino. Reese says the store owner, Larry Poole, took in about $30,000 a month in illegal gambling. That's about the amount the lottery outlet took in a year. Deputies spent most of the night taking away the slot machines and confiscating nearly $18,000. They arrested an employee, Catherine Stevens, and charged her with commercial gambling. Deputies tell us they plan to arrest several others, including the store owner, this weekend. Poole pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor of commercial gambling when his store was raided last November. An unidentified man is in critical condition at this hour after a Macon police car hit him. We just talked to police and they tell us around 6 tonight the man stepped into the path of Officer Keith Woodford's car. Woodford had a green light on Eisenhower Parkway and was crossing the intersection at 2nd Street when he hit the man. That man had no identification on him. We'll have more on this developing story on First Morning. A 17-year-old Macon man is in stable condition with a gunshot wound to the arm, and detectives are questioning witnesses to find out who shot Tillis Foster. We just talked to detectives. They tell us they have a few suspects, but no arrests. They tell us around 4, Foster was shot in his car in the drive through at the Burger King on Bloomfield Road. As he tried to get away, his car slammed into a telephone pole. Witnesses say the shooter fled in another car with three others heading along Mercer University Drive. 
Police say that car is a brown Oldsmobile Delta 88 with a black vinyl top. They think a stolen tag number is 635-KB-Z. A 12-year-old Atlanta boy lies in the hospital in serious condition with a gunshot wound, and his 13-year-old neighbor is charged with a shooting. Police say Daryl Smith was shot in the cheek with a 38 caliber pistol. The 13-year-old is charged with aggravated assault, but police say they don't believe there was any malicious intent. The shooting happened at an apartment complex on Westchester Boulevard. A Macon woman who was beaten to death and set on fire will be buried tomorrow. And tonight, her suffering family needs your help. Jennifer Hazelton is live in the Macon newsroom to tell you how you can do just that. Jennifer? Tina, the last thing the Berrien family thought they'd have to do this Christmas would be to bury the 19-year-old they called Toya. Now Toya's murder has left her family broken emotionally and financially. She was real, real kind-hearted. Um, she didn't want to see anybody hurt. I mean, we were not prepared for this. LaToya Berrien's family is devastated over losing her. Devastated someone would beat her and then set her clothes on fire here on Chestnut Street. They are devastated because they can't give her the burial they say she deserves. We were not prepared for this. You can't really do a decent burial for anyone now under, just say, $4,000, you know. That's $4,000 Linda Wells says her family doesn't have. And LaToya wasn't covered by insurance. So now their holiday season has turned into a season of mourning. Christmas is out for us. The money set aside for the children's presents will now be scraped together for LaToya's burial. And that's still not enough. The family has to come up with even more money. Whatever it takes, then you know, we're going we gonna to do it. You know, whatever it takes to get the money. If we don't have it, whatever it takes to get it, we'll get it. LaToya's burial is set for tomorrow. If you want to help LaToya's family, here's how you can do it. The family has set up an account in LaToya's name to help cover the cost of her funeral. That account is at the First Liberty Bank. Tina? All right. Thank you, Jennifer. The parents of a murdered six-year-old beauty queen may soon be questioned by police again. During a news conference today, investigators say they had uncovered new information regarding Joan Benet Ramsey's death last year at her Boulder, Colorado home. The child was found strangled in the basement nearly a year ago. Police say her parents, John and Patricia, remain under an umbrella of suspicion. They also want to question Ramsey's son, Burke. No time has been set for the interview. A 20-year-old Alma man charged with murdering a Southeast Georgia couple and their two children remains in a Toombs County jail tonight. Jerry Scott Heidler will make his first court appearance Monday. He's charged with shooting Danny and Kim Daniels and their children, Jessica and Bryant, yesterday in their hometown of Santa Claus. He's also charged with kidnapping the couple's two other daughters and a foster daughter. Five members of a Yonkers, New York family are dead tonight in what police are calling a murder-suicide. Police found the bodies of Patrick Bullard, his wife Maureen, and their three children in their New York City suburb home this morning. They say Patrick Bullard shot his wife to death, then his children, before turning the gun on himself. An officer at the Youth Development Center in Milledgeville faces a charge of cruelty to children after the arm of a youth was broken. 26-year-old Frederick Howard is suspended without pay for the November 8th incident. The two-year employee of the YDC is out of jail on bond tonight. Corrections officers say the injured youth told others his arm was broken because he couldn't do push-ups. The department was warned about possible physical abuse eight months ago. Next week, Republican Guy Milner is announcing he's seeking the gubernatorial nomination again in 1998. Now the Georgia State Ethics Commission wants to investigate spending discrepancies reported in his 1994 bid. The era showed that during the 94 campaign, Milner didn't properly disclose some contributions totaling more than $125,000. A spokesperson for Milner says he would fully cooperate with the investigation. Now, earlier this year, Milner paid a $21,000 penalty from the Federal Elections Commission for his Senate campaign last year. There is hope tonight for the nearly 80,000 Georgians living with AIDS each day. I'm Kimberly Daniel. Find out how doctors from the South have come up with a new approach to fighting AIDS in tonight's 13 HealthCast. It is a day of mourning for hundreds in the Kentucky town of Paducah as the town buried three teenagers shot to death. Before we take a break, though, let's take a look at tonight's winning cash three numbers for you again. Four, two, four. 
Then the total payout for tonight's winning numbers, more than $767,000. Portions of this program are sponsored by Walmart. Husky, the toughest name in tools. Guaranteed forever. Available at the Home Depot. This is great. They're here. Huge shipments from all the great carpet mills in stock at GCO Carpet Outlet. Wow. Hey, didn't we just see something like this? Yeah, and look, it's $8 a yard less here. This has got to be the largest selection in town. I got a great price on Berber and six months financing interest-free. We could save $500. Come in today and save at GCO Carpet Outlet. We definitely got more for our money. GCO Carpet Outlet, across from Westgate Center, next to Food Max. We realize that not everyone has to wear a suit to the office these days. But chances are... You still have to wear shoes. The men's warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Heavy rains in Houston County flooded the main furniture warehouse at bankruptcy authorities. $300,000 worth of furniture sustained some damage. Insurance does not cover our losses, so we're conducting a flood sale. Save 30, 40, 50, 60, even 70% on over 150 bedroom suits and 35 entertainment centers. Savings depend on water damage. In usual bankruptcy authority commercials, we joke about letting it go. This is not a joke. It's a true crisis at bankruptcy authorities, 1451 Watson Boulevard. Coming your way, the winter issue of 13 WMAC and you. Packed full of information, ideas, and interviews. Check out where Central Georgia turns to talk. Regis, Kathy Lee, Rosie, and Oprah. Celebrate the season with your favorite specials, plus tributes to outstanding Central Georgia friends and neighbors. 13 WMAC and you has Mr. Food, Andy Griffith trivia, and a fond farewell to Dell. This and much more straight from the heart when you pick up your winter issue of 13 WMAC and you at the following locations. Eyewitness News Night Watch with Tina Hicks, Bill Powell, Edward McDonald. Coverage straight from the heart. More than 100 former employees of the Standard Textile Company in Forsyth could soon receive cash benefits. That's because today the Department of Labor announced employees of the company's Pride Craft Enterprises Division could be eligible for compensation under NAFTA and the Omnibus Trade and Competitiveness Act. Workers can file a claim Tuesday, December 16th in the training room of the Monroe County Board of Education. Now that is on Highway 41 or Brooklyn Avenue in Forsyth. Eligible workers could receive receive a total of 78 weeks of jobless benefits. The plant which produced hospital apparel closed in October. Now here are a few of the stories making headlines in tomorrow morning's Macon Telegraph. Find out the latest in the Santa Claus killings. Now police are saying the family had tried to help the man accused of killing them. And meet a great roadside grocer who's guided by his faith. Ed Grissomore tells the story of a man who hasn't let blindness slow him down. Plus, a Bibb County judge has given a South Fork to subdivision resident until December 13th to either fix his sewage problem or leave his house. Find out the man's response. And you can read these stories and much more in tomorrow's Megan Telegraph. If your child's not buckled up and you're driving on Georgia's roads, the law just may find you. As of today, police are checking to make sure everyone is buckled up at statewide roadblocks and intersections. This is the second wave of the Georgia State Patrol's Operation Snap and Strap. The week-long effort earlier in the year netted more than 28,000 citations. The patrol says that more than 60% of people killed in Georgia car accidents are either not buckled up not, or not placed in a child's safety seat properly. Not wearing seatbelts could be one reason one child is dead and six other children are injured in a bizarre car accident. And that story leaves our 13 newsreel tonight. The car the children were riding in ran into an apartment building in Birmingham, Alabama. Police say it happened when the brakes on the car failed. None of the seven children were in car seats or wearing seatbelts. Friends and family said farewell today to three girls who police say died at the hand of a classmate earlier this week. An overflowing crowd filled Bible Baptist Church in Paducah, Kentucky, where the coffins held the girls' bodies. Many of the students left goodbye notes on the girls' white caskets. The shooting happened as a group of students finished an informal prayer meeting in the school's lobby. 
Well, Kathy Lee Gifford's clothing line is causing her more trouble. The owner of three Manhattan factories under the Kathy Lee label was arrested yesterday and charged with violations of labor laws. Gifford came under fire last year when labor activities revealed that clothing sold under her name was made in a Honduran sweatshop. A promising new way to fight AIDS is being developed, and not too far from Central Georgia. 13 HealthCast reporter Kimberly Daniels shows you how doctors have come up with a drug that appears to block the virus from getting into the cells. Dear old Christy found out he was HIV positive in 1984. Six years later, he developed AIDS. A long time ago, I thought I wouldn't live more than four or five years. Everybody thought that. And 3TC. Over the years, Daryl's tried many traditional AIDS drugs. Recently, when it became clear his immune system was getting weaker and the virus was getting stronger, doctors put him on T20, which has shown promise in the lab. In a test tube, at least, in the laboratory, that this compound did inhibit the virus from entering into cells and actually from fusing with cells in the first place. Traditional drugs treat the virus once it's inside cells, but T20 blocks the virus from getting into cells in the first place. So far, tests show that virus levels have dropped to undetectable levels in people who got the most T20, all with no apparent side effects. Exciting results, but not a cure. But still, when you think about this therapy, perhaps in combination with the therapies that we already had, um, I think the door is still open to find out just how close to a cure we can come. The next step for Daryl is another test, this time a combination of the new T20 with traditional AIDS treatment. I don't know if there will ever be a cure, but I think that they're going to be able to treat it like they do diabetes. And T20 is a step. Kimberly Daniel, 13 cool. WMAZ Eyewitness News. In the next phase of the study, doctors plan to inject T20 under the skin so that patients can eventually do it themselves at home. If you'd like more information, send us a self-addressed envelope to AIDS Treatments, Post Office Box 5008, Macon, Georgia, 31208. Eleven volunteers at Central Georgia's American Red Cross were honored for their dedication and service. Dozens attended the afternoon ceremony today at the Chapter House in Macon. They watched nine women receive plaques recognizing them for their hard work in the community this year. Another volunteer received the Emergency Service Award and one more the Health and Safety Award. Others with 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 years of service received service pens. Well, old man winter has blown our way into central Georgia tonight, bringing some Arctic air with him. Here's what it looks like right now through the lens of our first Liberty Bank sky cam. Glad we can't feel that right now, Bill. We're going to need those jackets, aren't we? Well, I'll tell you, Tina, the sky cam doesn't show the fact that it's already down to 32 degrees with a wind chill of 26 out there. We'll tell you more. Stay with us. Ooh. Well, as we go to break, here's a look at tonight's winning cash four numbers for you again. They are 6, 4, 6, 9, Fantasy 5, 2, 16, 34, 27, 22. It's bigger, hotter, every night. It'll blow you away. It's The Late Show with David Letterman. Man, look at it. Wow, was that exciting. In The Late Show, the most exciting hour in American television. Tonight on Day, it's Crystal. You look marvelous. <laughs> and Cuba. Come on, David Letterman! Yeah. Tonight on The Late Show with David Letterman. David Letterman, tonight at 12.05, only on 13 WMAZ. Man's World is the best place in the world to shop for men's clothes, and 13 WMAZ is the best place in the world to advertise if you want people to come see you. When anybody asks me about my advertising, what is my number one advertising that I do? It is Channel 13. Tis the season to save 50% during the power shopping weekend at Parisian. Save 50% on men's suits and sport coats. 50% on men's architect shirts and kids' playwear. Plus, save 50% on fall holiday dresses from Maggie London, Jessica Howard, and more. 50% on women's shoes and boots from Enzo, Unisa, and more. And 50% on women's coats, juniors' clothing, and even Christmas trim a home. The Power Shopping Weekend. Get there any way you can. Remember, save 50% now through Monday. And now, a cost comparison between scheduled maintenance on your BMW and the cost to maintain your pet goldfish.
first snowball. $50. BMW, zero. See, with scheduled maintenance now standard, it could cost $50 more to maintain your goldfish than your BMW. Make that $50.99. See your local authorized BMW retailer today. Portions of this broadcast brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Has Bill Powell got a forecast for you? Yes, I do, Tina, and it's uh, going to be a little nippy tonight. But don't let this weekend's cold weather stop you from getting in the holiday spirit. No, sir. It didn't stop the dozens in Butts County who watched their annual Christmas parade tonight. And it shouldn't stop the folks from enjoying the parades in Warner Robins tomorrow and Sunday in Macon. And don't let it stop you from donating to our gift from the heart, Food and Toy Drive. Now, that's tomorrow at Macon, Warner Robins, and Perry Kroger stores, except the new Kroger store on Pianona Avenue in Macon. You can also drop off items at Hamby Auto Dealers in Perry, and those donated items will help the groups that help the needy this holiday season. So give till it feels just downright so good, all right? Take a look at the Macon Live 13 Skywatch Doppler radar. It's dry, thank goodness, because the temperature is already down to the freezing mark. Let's take a look at the Macon Sky Cam, and you can see that it uh, does look a little cold out there. You get out in it and you'll feel it. 32 degrees, the temperature, and the wind chill now stands at 26. Our barometric pressure is rising at 30.03. Relative humidity at 82%. Northwest winds, at west winds rather, at 6 miles per hour. Had a low of 38, but that goes to a lie because we have a current reading of 32. That would be the low so far today. Had a high today of only 51, and the winds were definitely a problem. Of course, we didn't get any rain, thank goodness. Here's tonight's forecast. Skies are clear. Low temperatures by morning time. Well, it's 32 now. It's conceivable it could go to the upper 20s, possibly even the mid-20s. But the winds, of course, are going to hold the temperature up some. Meantime, tomorrow, you can expect a cold, windy day. Sunshine, dry, high temperatures only expected to reach into the mid-40s. But the northwesterly winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour, are going to keep the wind chills possibly in the 20s around central Georgia. Good luck to you folks in Warner Robins for your Christmas parade tomorrow morning. Well, around the state at this hour, it's 37 in Warner Robins while we're at 32. It's already down to 29 in Atlanta, 37 in Augusta, 41 though in Valdosta. They're a little bit better off than we are. Now, actually, we have mostly clear skies over Georgia. There are some clouds in the Georgia mountains, but really nothing in the way of uh, uh, to stop the cold air from pushing in. But the core of the cold air is still out in the central plains. Tomorrow morning, we're looking for lows statewide in the 20s and the 30s, mid to upper 20s for central Georgia. And then tomorrow, well, high temperatures are not going to be that high. Northern sections of Georgia will see highs only in the 30s, central and southern sections in the 40s, extreme southern sections possibly highs in the 50s. It's going to be a cold day tomorrow, and of course the winds will also contribute to the feeling of it being quite cool. Here's the Daily Planner tonight. Clear skies, lows expected mid to upper 20s, highs tomorrow only in the mid 40s, possible wind chills tomorrow in the 20s, tomorrow night. Fair skies, temperatures falling, <coughs> excuse me, to the mid to upper 20s. Afternoon temperatures moderating to the low 50s for the Christmas parade in Macon. Monday is the beginning day for some more rain possible next week in central Georgia. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> well, sports is up next, and Edward McDonald will tell you if it will be Peyton's place in the SEC title game. But before we go to break... Let's take another look at your winning big game numbers. Take a look. 10, 25, 23, 42, 40. And your big game number is 7.
Heavy rains in Houston County flooded the main furniture warehouse at bankruptcy authorities. $300,000 worth of furniture sustained some damage. Insurance does not cover our losses, so we're conducting a flood sale. Save 30, 40, 50, 60, even 70% on over 150 bedroom suits and 35 entertainment centers. Savings depend on water damage. In usual bankruptcy authority commercials, we joke about letting it go. This is not a joke. It's a true crisis at bankruptcy authorities, 1451 Watson Boulevard. Catch the action tonight at 11.35 on 13 WMAZ. Oh, look! Maybe you could use an electronic super-duper yeah. fully automatic whatchamajigger. It's electronic. But odds are it'll wind up in the yard sale. At Goodies, wrap up ladies' velour tops and pants, ladies' plush fleece tops, and a special selection of sweaters for men and ladies. All 50% off during the super weekend sale at Goodies Family Clothing. So when they say... Look. <laughs> they really mean take a good look at goodies for Christmas. In time for Christmas, Barnes Furs 70th anniversary sale continues. Fantastic savings on every fur. Drastic reductions on every fur. Barnes Furs biggest sale in 70 years with 30 to 60% off. Gorgeous furs. Fantastic savings. Great financing. Quality for quality, no one can beat the Barnes price. And just in time for Christmas, Barnes Furs' biggest sale in 70 years. Barnes Furs, Cherry Street, downtown Macon. There's a lot of sports out there, even though it's cold. That one McDonald can tell you about it. I can tell you about the cold. It was cold. We got football Friday night coming your way in about another 10 minutes or so. And folks, get your popcorn and stuff early. You won't want to move. We got some barn burners for you, including that major Double over the time game between Tatlow and Mount Sales for the AAA uh, state title in the GISA. Don't move. We'll talk about that in a minute. All right, tomorrow the Georgia Military Bulldogs will play Hines Community College of Raymond, Mississippi in the annual Golden Isles Bowl down in Brunswick. Now, the Bulldogs have been there before and would love to walk away with a, a win, and we hope you do too. Good luck. Now, speaking of bowls, Peyton Manning and the Tennessee Volunteers. Move, Peyton. We, have to, we got things to do. We'd love to make it to the Sugar Bowl, but to get there, the Vols will have to take out Auburn by doing things like that in the SEC championship game. Now, this is going to be a good one. I'll tell you, Auburn's got it going on. So does Tennessee. And uh, we couldn't figure it out. We had to get the expert opinion of old Miss head coach Tommy Tuberville on this major matchup. We play both of them, and both of them on the road. Uh, I think they're very comparable. I think that uh, the, the two quarterbacks, Damian Craig and Peyton Manning, will decide the outcome of the game. And uh, I think Damian Craig is, uh, is hard to, to go against because I've seen him pull off wonders all year long. And for the last two years, he's a super quarterback. But Peyton also is an excellent quarterback. And it'll be a good football game. It'll probably be one of the best championship games we've had in a while. All right, I'll agree with that. Let's talk a little bit about basketball since you said best. He was one of the best around here. Michael Hunt was a key player on that 1979 Macon Southwest basketball team that won the state and national championships. Now, after high school, he played his college ball at Furman, then began a coaching career that brought him up and down the East Coast, and now he's brought him back to his home state. Steve Russell caught up with him and has this story. For many, to have the career you want and the place you want to be is a dream come true. Georgia assistant men's basketball coach Michael Hunt is one of those realizing his dream. And Athens is a nice town uh, to be a student and also to, uh, to raise a family, so I'm enjoying it a lot. College coaching is something Hunt always thought he could be successful at, all the way back to his playing days at Southwest. People always said then, hey, you've got a good head about the game, uh, maybe you'll be a coach one day. And Sure enough, when I graduated from college, I needed a job, so this seemed to be the best way to go, and uh, 12 years later, here I am, and uh, enjoying every minute of it. Almost every assistant has aspirations to become a head coach someday, and Hunt is no exception. But for now, he's enjoying his time teaching the Bulldogs. Being a native Georgian, it, it really means a lot when we put those uniforms on and we run out and, and we represent the University of Georgia. So again, me being able to share it with my family makes it all the more special for me. When he looks back over his basketball career, Hunt sometimes wishes he played for Georgia, but the program was different 18 years ago. 
but he's a bulldog now, coaching in his home state and enjoying every minute of his dream. Steve Russell, 13 WMAZ, Eyewitness Sports. Yeah, 11, 11.35, don't, don't touch, hold on a second. Hunt and his crew are in the mix tomorrow playing Stanford in the first round of the Wooden Classic. Trying to get these people together, make sure they don't leave the television. Football Friday night coming your way, 11.35, be there. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> season. Well, tis the season of giving and one local group has wrapped up a really special treat for our veterans and we'll have that story straight from the heart as Eyewitness News Nightwatch continues for all of us right here in Central Georgia. There's a heart full of laughter, a heart that's full of love, a heart that's always happy as long as skies are up above. There's a heart of our tradition and the heart of dreams to be straight from the heart 13WMAZ straight from the heart when the Gen 2 penguin builds a home it starts with an early morning dip then it's off to claim some prime real estate with a gift for design it mixes a little of this and a little of that making a home as unique as the inhabitants themselves some of us are blessed with this talent. The rest of us could use a little help. That's why Badcock Home Furnishing Centers offer many styles of living rooms with prices for any budget. Badcock, making your house a home since 1904. This Saturday at every Macy's, it's Super Saturday. One super day of savings store-wide. Sportswear for Mrs., women, and petites, an extra 30 to 40% off. All coats for her, 25 to 50%, plus an extra 10% off. Sleepwear and robes for her, 25% off. Men's suits, dress shirts, overcoats, rainwear, 50% off. Utica bath towels, just $3.99. Super savings throughout the store. Macy's Super Saturday. Don't miss it. gifts at Lowe's. They all own their own houses now, and nobody carries more holiday decorations. You haven't met my friend here. What do you think she'd like? Gift certificate? Yeah. This will help him with that fixer-upper he bought. Mike. No, Bobby. Michael built his house, remember? Oh. Well, anyway. Great price. Why do you think we're called Lowe's? Honey, the car's over here. No, this way. When it comes to holiday gifts, Lowe's knows. The holidays are a little merrier tonight for the people at the Veterans Home in Dublin. Thanks to Santa's helpers lending a hand straight from the heart, the women of the American Legion Auxiliary opened their annual free gift shop today. Veterans could pick out gifts to send to their loved ones and have those presents wrapped and mailed out. Each year, the women's group offers nearly a thousand gifts at no charge to the vets. And when you think of gifts, you might think of Beanie Babies. They've been one of the hottest toys all year long. Well, these Beanie Babies are part of the private collection at the Macon Museum of Arts and Sciences. Last week, the museum auctioned off some of the retired Beanie Babies, and some of these cute little guys went for as much as $60, all to benefit the museum. But collectors of the small stuffed toys say they could be worth a whole lot more. Some of the beanies, in mint condition, can go for as much as $2,000, as long as you don't cut off any of the tags on the toys. But if you do that, you'll see the value go down. We thank you for joining us for Eyewitness News Night Watch. And make sure you tune in for weekend morning. We're going to show you tomorrow. Suzanne's going to show you at least uh, how Mark Ballard put the set together. It's going to be fun. We leave you now with Santa's visit with hundreds of children tonight at the Museum of Arts and Sciences. Enjoy. Have a great weekend. Stay warm. Good night for now.